This is the moment a few months ago Gary Gate crashed my Silverson Grand Prix track experience with a shitbox Suzuki Swift. Have you thought this through? No, it's completely untested. It was literally finished. I know that Just because before I finished you left, it. You finished it. Now in this series, we're going to show you all the hard work we put in to get the car to the track. <laughs> We've heard of wacky races, this is rusty races, and happy to announce we've got a new member in the family. We've got this Suzuki Swift in to join us. Um, it came to us through Mac, who was at a Mock Hill track day, and Gary's brought me Mac's car. Mac lives a few miles away from me, but Mac wants to join the gang. He's come to Knock Hill. Um, we're done for the season kind of thing right now, but we'll be picking it back up again soon, so we're getting her ready to join us at Knock Hill. I went with Mark to buy the car, I've had a look round it, but since then Paul's checked it and there's quite a few things that I missed, as usual. So just a quick list, I have done a five minute check on the car and I'm going to run through a little few things that I've found. Number one, the inside of the discs is pretty bad so they're going to need replaced. The drop link is completely the opposite of this side. This one's like at a 45 degree angle, so there's an issue there. I think it's been fitted wrong and it's going to need swapped round. There is no catalytic converter on the car, which is a huge issue here. Um, I'm just going to whiz round. There's play in that um, bottom arm. They have supplied a bottom arm for this side, so we're going to have to replace that. So we will replace the two of them. Walking round, the door check strap is completely gone um, on the door, so that's going to need addressed. The back tyre here on the inside is split, you'll see there, so that's going to be an MOT failure. Um, also the back brakes are away, so they're going to need replaced. We have some fluid leaking down here, so that is a bust brake line there, which is actually going to need the tank and everything dropped to repair it. Shocker looks a little bit suspect for a leak compared to the other side. Um, so we might replace that. This wheel has been severely curbed. Um, there is a big, huge... It's kind of... It might be hard to see. There's a big gouge out it. It's like... So it's kind of run like a 50p. We might have to address that some way. Um, this... We are... Uh, Splash guard is off. Um, there, Gary told me he'd done a light check in the car, but I have since checked it. There is no side lights. Gary said they were working when he checked them, but if you look in here, they aren't even connected and there is no bulb, so don't know what he was looking at. There's some sort of Halford's earth strap has been connected here for whatever reason. Um, the alternator has got a new alternator on it, but it is not charging the battery, so there's an issue there. You can see the kind of funky bolts that has been attached to get this manifold to fit. The CV boot is burst there, and there's actually clicking coming from the CV joint, so it's going to need replaced. When checking the coolant, I have noticed that the cap isn't in the best condition, you'll see there. So we're going to replace that. This air box has been cable tied, as well as the back brake pipes as well, actually, that I've not showed you. Um, they've been replaced. The, two of the back pipes have been replaced, um, but not the ones that run up the length of the car. They've been cable tied on. This is cable tied there because the clip is broke and there is no stay on that section here. So we've got a bit of play there. Engine management light is on. I'm going to say, Gary, is that to do with... That is, if you disconnect the battery and reconnect it, it starts and the light doesn't come on. It's the second time, so it's probably the car issue. Right, but no one's diagnosed it? No, yeah, no. We will do a little code read and we will reveal the price as well. This um, falls out. The side indicator. The worst. Say that again. I see it stinks and the interior is the worst. The interior. Oh, the interior is no nice place to sit. There's a lot of lacquer peel and stuff um, on areas, red cars do that. The seats are burst. Watch that door doesn't uh, knock you out there because it's so fucking bad. The window, there's an issue with the regulator or something. It's having a huge click and bang when it goes down so far. There is one locking wheel nut on the car. 
and nowhere else. Seats all bust. Um, there's there's tools in the passenger seat which proves Gary's already been tinkering with it, which is the worst thing about it. And last but not least, it's had some sort of impact here on the sill. You can see it's bent there, but it is solid. I just wanted to show you that. But that is the Suzuki Swift. So I've put together a list of everything that's going to need done. Also recommend just a service, etc. If he's putting it on the track, upgrading the brake fluid, um, pads, this, whatever, etc. He wants to do with it. But I'm going to have to give him a quick phone call and just make sure he's giving me the go ahead. Once he does that, the plan is just to strip everything down um, and then just get a time lapse going and just, just get this rebuilt. We will update you guys along the way. So first things first as always we're going to remove the wheel and already this has thrown a spanner in the works. As we've uncovered that there is a spigot ring in the car which we've no idea if it's the right size or not. Now we know everything is pretty much shot in this car from the walk around so we're just going to strip everything off at once, starting with the brakes. And from there I can start on the drop link which I showed you earlier has been installed the complete wrong way and I can strip off the lower arm ready to install a new one as well. Given what we've got planned for this little car and the amount of track days we're looking to attend, it's a good time to address the suspension. With some of the components being completely worn out, it's an ideal time for us to strip everything off and just replace everything in pairs. With the suspension completely stripped off, I can now start giving attention to the fuel tank area. We need to lower the fuel tank down slightly so that I can shape up a new brake pipe as you've seen has burst. First things first I need to strip off the exhaust, it's got a lot of mountain rubbers and these haven't been off for a while, so it was a bit of a wrestle but you can see we got there in the end. And now off comes that horrible exhaust manifold. This one has been decatted and we need a cat here in the UK for emissions regulations, so we've managed to find a second hand one off of eBay which will do the job just fine. This one came off pretty easy as most of the bolts were actually loose, which becomes a pattern on this car through time. So the aftermath of that quick time lapse is the car is completely stripped. There is stuff everywhere. Let's just get you guys up to date. So the front arm is off this side and um, they gave us that side. So we're waiting on uh, a new one, which we'll get tomorrow. Um, the CV joint was an absolute pig to get off but we managed, so it's off and it'll get done. This caliper wouldn't push back as good as it should, so I think it's just, just change it. Um, if Mark wants to use it on a track and it starts eating brakes and stuff, I think it's just time to, to change it. Um, we fixed the alternator issue from in below. The wire wasn't actually tight um, for the charge and we've put the multimeter on and we're getting 14 volts, so it is sorted. That's a good bit of luck there and a money saver. Um, there is some issue with the wheels. There is mad spacers on, which, like, I don't get that at all. I don't know how that works. That is horrendous. And that was spaced between the front wheels, but not the back wheels. I have no idea why, like, there's spigot rings on the wheels as well, but the spigot ring doesn't even fit inside... Um, that's in a boa, so there's going to be some issues with the wheels. That's I'm no good at that stuff, guys, to be honest. I don't know anything about it. Um, I just put wheels at fat one, to be honest. Um, the back, we haven't pushed back the calipers yet, but everything is stripped here. Um, we've got heating stuff required. The exhaust is a bit of a nightmare to get off. Seized bolts, but it is off. The fuel tank is dropped to get into the brake pipe. Unfortunately, because of my ramp, I can't get the tank out. It's stuck without taking the back axle off, which I really don't want to do. But I can get access to the pipe, which is there, and it runs across that back corner there. But I can figure that out in situ. Um, that is the exhaust manifold. Gary has ordered one for Mark off eBay. Um, which I actually sent them the link for, so we have it there. We already had it, because we knew that this didn't have a cat when they bought it. So we got that ordered straight away. Um, it came off no boy, it was actually easy because they fannied it up, that Scottish term. 
uh, especially the connector for the O2 sensor, which we're going to have to revisit. Also, something I didn't note on the opposite side, the tie bar is off. That's not even tight, oh my god, look. Not even tight. That be, with some of that knocking was then. That's, that's been a theme for the car though, not even tight. Yeah, pretty much a theme, nothing's been tight. Alternator not tight, exhaust manifold not tight. Uh, there was some knocking when I just took it around the block before I put it in, but I just thought it was the bottom hands and stuff. There's a quick tour of the destruction. I look like I'm just home from, I don't know, the pits and the mines, and Gary's Me too. Sus it's suspiciously it's clean. Um, thanks to Michelle for bringing me a succulent Chinese meal. Um, it really picked up my spirits while we destroyed this. Um, we're just going to pause for tonight, I'm done. And tomorrow, loads more parts, service parts, etc. will be delivered. And I'm just going to start assembling. And we can see if we can get it for MOT. I'll phone Mark and tell him about his wheel situation. That's completely up to him. But Lewis is a Swift, so I don't know if they're going to rob the wheels because he's using EP3 wheels. Which actually look nice on the Swift, to be honest. But I don't know what the budget, etc. is here. That's up to Mark to sort out. But um, that's it for day one. Day two is going to be putting it back together. And a little wheel test. Making them jump, making them dance, making them jump, making them dance. We're